Protests, the music, the drugs, symptoms of a clash between generations. But that summer, 1969, here in Los Angeles, an aberration. The youth rebellion reached an illogical extreme and then went even beyond that. It was the summer of 1969 when the combination of drugs and do your own thing turned into the most bizarre murders of that decade. Actress Sharon Tate and seven others were brutally stabbed to death. Sharon not only didn't use drugs. At the time, Tate was the wife of famed director Roman Polanski. Convicted of the savage slayings were Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, Patricia Krenwickel, Leslie Van Houten, and their charismatic cult leader, Charles Manson. He was described by his followers as a living Jesus, a guru possessing mystical powers strong enough to kill for. He called himself Jesus and admired Hitler. And like both, Charles Manson, a career criminal, had followers. They lived at the old Spahn movie ranch above Chatsworth. It was there that Charles Manson let them in on his plans. They must commit random murders to trigger what Manson called Helter Skelter, ideas Manson claimed he got from the Bible and the Beatles. The motive behind the thing, I'm thoroughly convinced that it was the Helter Skelter motive. Manson's motive was summed up in Helter Skelter, the name of a song by the Beatles with the exact words smeared in blood at the LaBianca house. He had an obsession with Helter Skelter. He constantly predicted that Helter Skelter was coming down. What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. I don't need to kill anyone. I think it. I have it here. I mean, we spent hours on it, really, to get it dirtier and grittier and coarser and the drums. Then someone listens to it and says, ah, ha, ha, this is a signal. And you have no control over that. He'd read a lot of biblical stuff into us. Number nine. 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 Number nine.